reported now, uh, quoting the Israeli military as saying that nine soldiers have died. Well, with me now in the studio is my colleague Saeed Shahata from BBC uh, Arabic, who once again, you've been monitoring what's been happening overnight, Saeed. If we start with this news that today the Rafah crossing could be open to allow people out of Gaza, those who are obviously seriously injured. This would be the first time, wouldn't it, since this started, that people have been able to get out? It will be the first time uh, to open today since uh, 7th of October. Uh, and it was confirmed yesterday on uh, a channel in Egypt. It's called al qahira al ikhbariya which is uh, close to the, uh, the state. So, and it was confirmed by other sources in Egypt that they will open to admit or receive uh, the severely uh, injured Palestinians. And already there is preparation uh, close to the border. Uh, the Prime Minister of Egypt yesterday visited the area there. Uh, and uh, there is three field hospitals. So all preparation there to receive them. And it might be the first of like more uh, severely injured Palestinians to come uh, to, uh, to Egypt because the pressure is too, too much. There is more than 21,000 uh, injured in, uh, since 7th of October. And the hospitals in, in Gaza they face problems. They're running out of fuel. There is pressure on the uh, medical team and the facilities, the medicine. So there's many problems, I think. So what is Egypt doing, I think, with coordination, I think, with Israel and the United States, uh, that to relieve and to, to make the pressure less on the uh, Palestinian and because there is a lot of pressure on the Palestinian because of the uh, killing children, women and all this stuff. So it is uh, a breakthrough. It will help and I think it will be more. But Egypt uh, keen is keen to make like uh, clear that that this does not mean there's a limit to this absolutely because they don't like to be misunderstood that uh, the people in Gaza will move to Sinai as like the, there is many pressure for for that but Egypt is is firm uh, this is with, not about Palestinians leaving Gaza is absolutely. it absolutely it's only for severely injured but also for foreign nationals who have trying to get out of Gaza British foreign nationals of which there are many and other foreign nationals as well there could be an opening for them possibly it's not clear is it there are some negotiations going on uh, on the British side the American side with Egyptian authorities and with with Hamas and I think there is no interest of Hamas to keep them, especially the, the uh, Hamas announced that they are uh, uh, willing to release the hostages, the foreign hostages uh, they got on uh, 7th of October. So if they are willing to do that, so I think they are willing to, to do that to, to, to improve their image uh, in the world and in order to uh, win support for, for whatever they want to achieve. All mobile and internet communications are down in Gaza again. Um, can you tell us any more about that? This has severe consequences, doesn't it, for everyone operating, obviously, in Gaza, but also all those international aid organisations who are trying to coordinate and communicate with their people on the ground. It happened before. Uh, the last few days it happened before. There was blackout and the international organisations working there to help Palestinians. They were suffering not to communicate. The ambulances cannot be reached, so they go after the explosion, but they can't receive any phone calls. Even the wallet food uh, programs, you couldn't uh, deliver uh, food for, for people. So is the reason there is looting for the warehouses because people were starving. And when people were starving, they try to do anything to get the food. So it will have many uh, big consequences on people. And just very quickly, what's the reaction been, you know, in the Arab world, in social media, in the Arab press to the, uh, the huge strike at Jabalia? Uh, it's condemnation all over the Arab world. And it came, uh, one of the examples is the Secretary General of the Arab League, Abul Ghait, where he stated, like, this atrocity should be stopped, Israel should stop that. And all Arab countries, even with the, uh, when uh, King Abdullah uh, has received a call from uh, President Biden, they talk about, like, the conflict, the problem there. And King Abdullah said again and repeat again, a two-state solution, uh, and the Palestinian state and the eastern Jerusalem will be the capital. It is the only solution for the conflict and it will avoid like repeating this conflict happening okay. from time to time. Saeed, thank you again for keeping us up to date on what's been going on in the last few hours. Saeed uh, Shahata there from BBC uh, Arab.